Welcome to another week of Experience Michiana. I'm really excited to showcase what we've been visiting recently, especially some of the sweet places that we've been to. That's right, Courtney. We have a sweet show for you today. I had a chance to go down to Culver to a place called MJ's Sweet Tooth, and it's a great place with candy, a candy shop, but also now sweet baked goods. So it's really going to hit the taste buds. That sounds delicious. And one of the other places that I was able to visit was at the South Bend Museum of Art. And I'm really excited to showcase one of our own local legends in the potter's world. That's going to be coming up here in just a little bit, too. But first, Kelly is up in Niles, and it's, I believe it's tea time today, and we're going to find out about a tea shop up in Niles. Welcome to Apotheca Teas here in Niles, Michigan, and I believe the subtitles are Infusions and Frivolity. <laughs> and as you're about to find out, when you come here, you are going to be getting much more than just a spa a tea. And Laura, <laughs> <laughs> so excited to be here. And you. I, you know, when the minute I kind of heard the name Apotheca Teas, I thought about apothecary. Did I, yes. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes, apothecary is definitely the feel we were going for. Um, an apothecary was an old time, uh, functionally a pharmacy where you could, could, could get things. But what we were kind of touching on was the idea that you could get things custom blended mm -hmm. because that's what they would do. They would compound medications for you. So we're a compounding tea apothecary. We'll take base teas and then just add in whatever things make you happy. And one thing I really love about this place, so you, the vibe here is really cool. And so you were going for Victorian steampunk? Yes. Okay, so I know Victorian <laughs> steampunk you have to educate me on. The easiest way to think about it is like Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's like a futuristic Victorian. It's a reimagined future where some of the things that went wrong in the real future maybe didn't happen wrong in this fantastic view that you've got now. You can, you can have dirigibles, you can have airships, you can, you can do anything. There's, there are no limits that we actually have to live with in the real world. Here, your imagination rules. Now, I have to tell you, I absolutely love tea, and I took a trip to London uh, this, last year mm -hmm. and just loved tea time. What inspired you to open a tea shop? A couple of things. Part of it was actually our own experience in, in England seeing an entire culture that embraced the idea of slowing down periodically through the day to just enjoy that cup of tea, just that one thing that was right in front of you. That was a huge part because Americans don't seem to have a cultural equivalent mm -hmm. to slowing down and actually enjoying the moment. So that was very, very important to us. And that's why when you have tea here and our dining room is open, you have actual china that you've chosen out of a china, shop, yeah. china cabinet because we don't want it to just be the to-go cup that doesn't pull you into a different place. Our whole goal was for you to suspend reality at that door and enter a different place here. England doesn't do that much of it. They are still very much living in a modern time, but since we're in a fantasy zone here, we, we can do what we want. <laughs> well, I am so looking forward to some tea, but also before we go there, I, I was looking around and you have some items here from local artists, from hats to jewelry. We, we went into this with a very deliberate goal of allowing local artists, artisans, makers, because the steampunk movement is also very much a maker movement. There's a different level of involvement in the items that you're using and seeing every day. So we wanted to encourage local artists who maybe only have one or two products. They don't need a storefront, but they have got a wonderful contribution to the community. So we, we deliberately sought them out and kind of rotate some of them through. I think the last time I counted, we have 17 different businesses mm. here with either tea related, however tightly or loosely, or coffee or beverage. We try to keep it somewhat thematically appropriate, but honestly, I have more exceptions than I do rules. <laughs> so yes, we have a lady in Elkhart that makes um, hats and jewelry from heirloom haberdashery. Chromafire was here this morning refilling the tentacle mugs that she makes and sells here. Coffee is, brewed, is um, roasted in Buchanan. Syrup is harvested in Rust Forest by students doing this as a fundraiser. Uh, honey and Baroda. Pretty Things from Niles, another mm -hmm. potter from Niles. I, 
we're surrounded by artists who have something to say and something to contribute, and this gives them a place to do that. In. Absolutely. Well, we're also surrounded by lots and lots of tea, and Absolutely. I am ready to, to <laughs> sit down for some infusions and some frivolity. Lovely. Oh my goodness, you rock that! <laughs> Am I rocking that? Oh my gosh! I'm like all in the mood now. Wow! Oh, totally your ready. timer just finished, which oh, means it's time is, to pour your tea. Is that, is that okay? what that was? May I? Oh, thank you. Oh. Okay. So you put your strainer on top of your cup, and then you pour through it, and it catches the tea leaves. I made you a hot cinnamon spice tea this morning. Nice. And it enjoys it if you add a little bit of milk and sugar. Absolutely. And then see, you've got the little lump. So you can say you want this. one lump or two. Oh my gosh, I'll take one for now. <laughs> I might have to do two. There's also some honey if you prefer. And this is cream instead of milk. But Love the cream. It's just because you mentioned cream. We generally have options. And on a related note, we also have plant-based milks because oh, we do try nice. very hard to have things for vegan, gluten-free, keto. We, we, we try to accommodate as much as we can. I don't mean and to interrupt you, but this is <laughs> delicious. I'm glad you enjoy this it. This is so good. That is oh my, one of our more popular. You're kind of transporting me, Laura, <laughs> to a much better place right now. That's wonderful. <laughs> that is the whole goal is to just be a part a little bit to do something different than your every day. The afternoon tea is meant to be a delight. It comes on three tiered trays and you start with your savories down here. So yesterday I made some bacon cheddar roulades Ooh. and leek tarts and um, a cucumber sandwich because you have to have a cucumber sandwich. And you know, we, those things all change out pretty frequently. And then you have scones. Yes, right here. Can yes. I try it? Absolutely. May You've I got an American it? style scone there that's uh, cherry almond mm -hmm. and chocolate. Ooh. Um, in front of me that I'm going to have later is a British style scone with clotted oh, cream and uh, strawberry jam. But we offer a lot wow. of jams. That's another business. Sticky Spoons here in Niles makes incredible jams. Mm. Um, and then on your top tier are the pretty little desserts. And everything is meant to be finger food. Small bites, little nibbles, so you can try a lot of so things. You can try. I like that, trying yes. a lot of different things. Now, I know that you serve tea here, but really at the heart of it, and at your heart, is serving the community. It is. <laughs> you get to sit down with people in a different way when there's a cup of tea on the table, in a way that it's difficult to describe until you've been able to experience it. We, we like when the dining room is open. Again, everything is based on when the dining room is open. We have flowers that you can choose. When, after you've ordered your tea, you choose which flower is going to go on your table. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting here at a table with a yellow rose, that means you're inviting somebody to introduce themselves and sit down and chat in a non-creepy way because you've invited that. And if you'd kind of rather not, you just put a thistle on your table and they know that means that you know for whatever reason you would rather not share your table mm -hmm. and that's okay and then there's games in the back that people will sometimes if you get two yellow rose tables they'll get together and start playing games together oh, and you'll see fun. numbers exchanged with families and it's wonderful to have a kind of interaction that's not done in a socially awkward way. Right, right. So, now what are your days and hours right now? We are currently open Wednesdays 11 to 7 and Saturdays 10 to 4 just regular walk up and we're open. However, uh, we're open by appointment all week long. Okay. And so you also you, have delivery and carry out. Not delivery. Not delivery, but I do carry out. Carry right now out. that's okay. really all we're doing. We're not providing table service except for you at oh. this point well, <laughs> because we're you. closed. When we're closed, I can do a little bit more because we just simply don't want to risk people. Absolutely. Not worth that to us. Absolutely. But we are allowing people to use the tables once they've picked their things up at the counter, we've taken the tablecloths off and put um, disinfecting spray and wipes at the tables. So if you choose to take your items to a table and sit down, you can now that the um, Michigan Health Department has lifted some of the restrictions. Okay, well hopefully those restrictions will be lifted more, you know, very soon down the line. Uh -huh. But it's so nice to know that you can still enjoy some tea and visit Apotheca Teas, Infusions and Frivolity. Yes. And you know what, you're going to be leaving not just with tea, but definitely a smile on your face and possibly a new friend. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much. Kelly, thank you so much for taking us up to Apotheca Teas in Niles. It's really a, a treat of a place. Uh, loved being up there. Uh, thanks for showing us that. And uh, Courtney, you've got a wonderful exhibit coming up here on the next segment. 
Yeah, at the South Bend Museum of Art in downtown South Bend, From the Potter's Wheel is an amazing exhibit that is really showcasing someone that many people know here locally in our community. So we'll be seeing some of her beautiful pieces. Let's check it out. If you've ever put your hands to the Potter's Wheel, you may likely have heard of Gundaga, who is an astounding artist here locally in the Michiana area. And I'm very excited to be here with her today here at the South Bend Museum of Art. Thank you so much for joining us, Gundaga. Thank you for asking me. And you've been doing pottery for quite some time. Uh, I started in 1970. Okay, so just a few years you've been yeah. doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what brought you to pottery? It, well, what brought you to pottery? We moved to South Bend from Minneapolis, and Minneapolis had a, a, a vibrant Latvian community, and I was teaching folk dancing oh, to the children. Oh, see, we could dance today too. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then we moved here, and then I saw the art center flyer, I think, and. Uh, I thought, well, I have to do something. I couldn't find a part-time job, and mm -hmm. I, I have to do something with myself. So uh, I thought, well, in college, I liked, I always, when I was a child, I liked pottery. Mm -hmm. I remember going to the farmer's market and yeah. seeing those pots that the farmer potters made, and, and I always liked them. And then now, I, you know, I saw that, yeah, they are, te they are showing how to, I mean, they're offering a class in clay. I'll just try it. Just give it a try. And here you are all yeah. these years later. <laughs> right. And you have such beautiful, well. exquisite art pieces. And you've been an inspiration to so many here in the Michiana community because you've been teaching for a number of these years as well. Yeah. Every year I teach a couple, one or, one or two. And then I taught children's classes. I really like that. Oh, I bet. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> to see their imagination. You have such an imagination. These are the pieces that really drew my eye in, too. They're so light and airy. How would you describe these pieces? <laughs> Those are air cups. <laughs> <laughs> air cups. <laughs> Fill your cup up with air. <laughs> yeah, right. I love them. It doesn't hold anything else. I've never seen anything like this. How do you come up with the ideas for your I pottery? I don't know just comes to you. You just start working and then one idea after another just keeps developing. So you kind of start with the ball and move from there and see yeah, where it takes yeah, you. Yeah, you start and you learn to center and do whatever needs to be done and then later it becomes fun. <laughs> it does, it does. Well, I'm so grateful that you're able to join us here today. And this exhibit is really just a celebration of you and, and such an impact that you've had in the community, both on uh, new potters as well as older potters who've been uh, eyeing your art for many years. And just to be able to celebrate you, I'm really grateful yeah. that you're able to be part of our cultural community here. Mark, who is the curator here at South Bend Museum of Art, is uh, joining us now to talk a little bit more about the exhibit. And I think this is one of the coolest things about it. It is uh, she's been here for so long, so many years, and has taught so many students here in the Michiana community. And I love to see how they've come together to really share how their work has inspired them too. Tell us a bit more about what this project is. Yeah, well, the, the exhibition itself came about because of a recommendation from students here. Oh, wow. That they all appreciated what Gundaga had done for them and what Gundaga had taught them, that they recommended it to our exhibitions committee. And we thought that was just so amazing. And it was such a great way to honor everything that she's done in, in the, the impact that she's had in all those years of teaching students at the South Bend Museum of Art, at IUSB, and at St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and all those students that have gone on to have their own careers. And what we wanted to do was also to talk about that and to highlight that as part of the exhibition. So we, we sent out a call for images okay. from past students of Gundaga's and said, hey, send us some images of your work. Yeah. And they, they did, they came through. Like here we have Megan Archer, who's, who learned from Gundaga here at the museum and who is now our current kiln tech at the oh, museum. Wow. Okay. There's Gundaga working on a huge pot. Oh, look. Wow. Um, Another thing that happened through this was that some of the former students, they started to include in those emails with the images, some statements about their time with oh, Gundaga. Oh, sweet. And I was like, 
oh my gosh, this is completely unsolicited, but these are beautiful statements. So I asked them, can we include those statements in the show? So around the gallery, we have some statements from past students about working with Gundaga and what they taught her and where it, where her, what she, they learned from her, where it's led them. Such an inspiration. Absolutely. I love this. And so when can come, people come and visit? What are your guys' uh, rules right now with the COVID and the pandemic? How can people come and see from the Potter's Wheel? Right. Well, uh, obviously common sense. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're masking up and uh, we're open our regular hours. So Wednesday through Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. And we are not MoMA, so we are not swarmed with people. So you don't have to worry. You can keep your distance from anybody here. Exactly. It's perfectly safe. We've uh, adjusted our cleaning procedures. It's a it's an absolutely safe place to be. Um, so we encourage you to, uh, to come out, see the show, and um, yeah, you see it before it comes down. Awesome, and it ends uh, in April, early April, correct? Yes, I have to check the April title. 4th. Well, it's April, April 4th. So you have until April 4th to come and check this out. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark, and what a wonderful celebration of such an amazing artist here in the Michiana community. Yes, thank you so much. And hopefully you'll see the show and it'll inspire you to make your own work. We there offer classes here at the museum. Perfect. So you can get your own hands dirty and who knows, this could be a show of your work in, oh. in another few years. All right, maybe I can get my hands dirty sometime soon, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I feel so honored to have spoken with Gundaga. It was just such an incredible experience to be able to look at everything alongside the actual artist. And with all of those vases and bowls, I think I could think of something that I could put in those. Do you have something for us, Kelsey? I think so. Uh, and I was amazed with just the variety of different things she had. And it was funny how she said where she keeps all of her stuff. It's just sitting yeah. in the basement, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, take, coming out of the basement, we got to find a sweet treat to end the show. And we're going down to Culver for MJ's Sweet Tooth. And you, we overloaded with sweetness here. Well, I'm excited. I can't wait to get my sweet tooth going. So we are in downtown Culver. And for those of you who have been here, you know it's a quiet but very beautiful little town. And there's also a lot for you to experience. And today, one of the new experiences that we have is a place called MJ Sweet Tooth. And here to tell us all about what it is, is MJ herself. MJ, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> so when I walked in, okay, it's like the saying goes, it's a kid in a candy shop, right? But this <laughs> yep. is a candy shop and uh, there's just really something for everybody here. There sure is, old, young. There we have a lot of nostalgic type of items that you wouldn't find in other places. Um, individual items, which is great because you don't have to buy a whole bag of something, but you could buy several little pieces. Um, so a little bit for everybody. There's just a huge variety and that's, that's the case even just for specific things. Like you guys have taffy, a whole bunch of flavors of taffy. Yes, we do. We usually have about 65 flavors at a time. Um, and so there's plenty that you could find and it's by the pound but uh, figures out to be about maybe 15 cents a piece. Oh, cool. So we don't overprice it either. Sure. Now another thing that you have a variety of it, and I thought was very entertaining because I hadn't seen it is like 45 flavors of cotton candy. <laughs> we do. <laughs> very interesting. A um, lot of different kinds. Well, there's a couple over here you can see. The spicy jalapeno. We have mimosas. Uh, as I told you earlier, the pizza and beer yeah, is a yeah. big thing for the Which males. Which are separate. They're different ones. Right. There's a beer one and a pizza one. But yeah, yeah very, very neat. Something that for everybody. And you said when kids come in, really, they're kind of drawn to the jars that are just stuffed full of candy as they get into the door, aren't they? It is. It's so exciting to see them walk in the door, too, because you just you can't even talk to them. Their eyes are just focused on all of the candy. Um, we do have the baskets right at the door, so it helps the parent a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a very small basket, so it keeps their, as a grandparent, you remember, you <laughs> yeah. know some of these things, so you keep their hands occupied. Sure. So they don't have to worry about them digging in too much. They sure. have to hold it to yep. add their items to it. Now you guys also offer a line of chocolates that comes from over in Fort Wayne. We do. DeBrand's, De it's a fabulous chocolate. If you haven't tried it, it's so smooth. Um, the best way to explain it to people, I think, is you take a bite of that chocolate and you don't get that oil on your palate yeah. as you're eating it. It's a very fine, good chocolate. 
They do a really good job of um, not overpowering the flavor. It's a very smooth flavor in everything I've tried. Yeah. Now the way you got into this, uh, before you had a store, you were creating some custom bouquets and baskets. Uh, tell me about that, and yeah, I think you have a couple of samples here, right? I do. Um, I started originally with things like this. You okay. take a base, put in different candies, and make make a unique bouquet, but something in the base that you could actually use after. Sure. Um, a nice uh, theme to it. Um, we do have for prom, or I wouldn't suggest the warm months of the year, <laughs> right, but yeah. maybe the fall yep. or winter because it does have chocolates. So each of the pieces are um, two Hershey's Kisses to make it look like a rose. Oh, very neat. And we do have the um, the boutonniere is up there. Okay. You could make it for the gentleman. This is nice for like a flower girl or um, someone that really wouldn't be interested all that much in the flower product after, but would definitely be excited about eating some chocolate. So you could they could rip it apart and have their chocolates. Now, uh, there is, like we said before, something for everybody. If, if you like any sort of candy, you can probably find it here or, or a type of it here that will really uh, satisfy your sweet tooth. But if you're not into candies, you guys started something a little bit uh, different uh, this uh, past year in 2020. Can we go next yeah, door and kind yeah, of take a look at that? let's walk on over. So we have stepped out of the candy section mm -hmm. and into a completely different store. So, so what do you call them? How do you distinguish the two different rooms? Oh, well, that side we've labeled it as the candy boutique. Okay. And this is our dessert shop. Okay. Dessert shop meaning a lot of people thought it was going to be a bakery. Yeah. But I didn't want it connected just to a bakery because we have other things sure. that you'll see that it's just going to be sweets. Um, okay. So it left the door open to other things, I guess, for us too. So you guys started this um, and then COVID kind of hit. It sure uh, did. So it was a big jump out on a limb. And then thankfully you guys are still here because we get to experience this. Yes. So this is, I love your description online. You talk about it's whatever grandma happens to want to make <laughs> in the morning. And so yeah. you make all this stuff in the kitchen. So give us an idea. What are some of these things that we have here? Well, we do have another baker that comes in and my daughter helps as well. So okay. we have a combined effort for everything that we make here. Um, so some of these things are, this is getting ready for Valentine's Day. Yep. So this is either a chocolate or vanilla cupcake. And it is filled with our cooked strawberry filling. This one happens to have strawberry buttercream, and this is vanilla buttercream, okay. and our little heart um, embellishments on it. A lot of the younger uh, people love edible cookie dough. Older and people too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the teens come in, and this is like yep. the big yep. thing that they want. Yep. The caramel pipettes. This is a tube that is filled with caramel. Oh, wow. That way you don't have the caramel all over it and sure. kind of making yeah. a mess. Yep. So this is our turtle, which is a chocolate cupcake, uh, caramel buttercream, and chocolate ganache, oh, wow. pecans, and then the caramel sauce. This is a vanilla cupcake. It's filled with uh, caramel or um, apple pie filling, walnuts, the caramel buttercream, and it has the caramel sauce as yep. well. We have homemade fudge, just started last week. Oh, wow. And it's taken off real well. Today, we just have the chocolate fudge. We've made the turtle fudge. Sure. And it turned out well, too. Uh, very moist, um, which I'm giving you samples, so you can let me know. Very good. Uh, these are some of our cookies. We have different flavors of cookies. And again, it's whatever we've decided to bake that day. Yeah. Those are our cranberry and white chip. OK. We have peanut butter with peanut butter chips, chocolate chip, and our lemon with white chips are the biggest okay. favorites so far. Yep. We have blueberry and white chip, cherry and white chip, and those are what we have out for today, but it varies. Every day we'll do something different. The um, cupcakes we have are, I showed you the turtle, the caramel apple, the cookie dough. Yep. We have it in a cupcake form, so it's a chocolate cupcake filled with edible cookie dough and a cookie dough ball on the top. Then we have, this is our strawberry buttercream, we have mint, and we do incorporate our DeBrands in our products sure. as yeah. well, not just selling it like yep. that. So this is a DeBrands mint on okay. top of a chocolate mint cupcake. Very good. That people love DeBrands and maybe they don't want to buy a whole package. Right. It works out well for yeah. us to use their product. And then we have muffins, muffins. over here, banana yep. muffins with nut without. 
over here. We do whole uh, cakes and pies at, at sometimes, again. Sure. This is a chalk, or, um, cheesecake with blueberry topping. Mm. We have puppy chow. This is our homemade applesauce. It's regular oh, wow. or strawberry. Okay. And we have our dog, dog treats. treats. Yeah, they're yeah. homemade dog treats. My so, daughter makes those. So again, something for everyone. And <laughs> I noticed that yeah, you had told me a little while ago that you guys started in doing some breads. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, right now we're just starting with the white artisan bread. Okay. And it's taking off well. We'll try some different flavors later and hopefully get to like the gluten-free and other extra products that are people are looking for sure but right now we're going to stick with the white and see how that goes Very good. we have in the summer we do have ice cream treats uh, we make ice cream cakes which is a if you look on our facebook page it's a massive ice cream cake yep. it's a two layer and it's it goes over well for birthday parties but we also do an ice cream cake in a cup okay so we have individual servings of our ice cream cake with we use our products our cookies the ice cream and whatever topping, okay. and it's nice for the individual. A lot of people like that. They'll come in in the summer looking yep. for just a cup of something. Yep. So it's pretty much we'll make whatever anybody wants us to make. So right now, what are your guys' hours? When are you open? Right now, we're reopening back up slowly. Um, we're going to do weekends, Friday, Saturday, 10 to 5, and Sunday, 10 to 3. And then once spring hits, we're going to go back to our seven days a week which will be a, the 10 to 5 hours. You have a great website that explains what your story is, but also your Facebook page is probably one of the best places to stay updated regularly, right? It is. Yeah. We update that quite often. Just this morning, I think we have about four posts okay. because we put our products. Right, yeah, That's how yeah. we advertise what we're having that day. And I've had it before that you know somebody comes running in and it's like, hey, did that cheesecake sell? Um, and so they're looking on that page. And you oh. still take uh, orders, so yep. if somebody has something they want specifically and want to make sure that it's here when they come, oh, yeah. uh, they should call ahead and, and set something up. Right, and that is welcomed yeah. because we don't do it every day. Yeah. Um, then we can be sure that we have that product for the day, and we do delivery. So uh, local delivery is, uh, I believe, $5 for delivery, okay. so not bad. Yeah. Um, we can work out whatever time you need us to be. We are even when we're closed during the week. Yep. We still take orders for pickup or delivery. Okay. Well, I can't wait to grab a basket. I'm gonna <laughs> be like the kids and, and, and keep my hands busy so I don't take too much. <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna go uh, go find some sweet stuff so that I can take it home. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you so much for Thanks showing for us around to MJ's Sweet Shop. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks, MJ, for showing us around and giving us a, kind of a, a sweet taste and treats as we headed out the door. We loved it. Uh, the, we had a sample of the new fudge. It was great. Oh, I love some fudge. That's so delicious. And I know we have lots of other places that we can explore here in Michiana, too. So I'm so grateful that you were able to join us for this week's experience, Michiana. But if you have some ideas of places you'd like us to visit, make sure you swing on over to our Facebook page and share those ideas so, with us so we can head on over there. That's right. And if you just use the hashtag Experience Michiana when you post while you're out, uh, we'll find it that way too. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you.